departures from truth, the worst departures from truth, are those departures which are so subtle that you don't um, right away see the insidiousness of them and how they could seep like gangrene into the ecclesia and make it ineffective. Good morning, everyone. Martin Zender here. I'm on fire. I'm on fire, just like uh, Pitbull. Uh, I can see now why there is in the ecclesia an ability in certain parts of the ecclesia to call evil evil and to stand up to draw the lines between truth and unbelief between light and darkness these are the things we struggle with and unless you recognize an enemy you can't overcome an enemy and there are enemies we have today look don't i wish we were in the day of all in all when everything was just nice and neat and peachy keen and we all arrived uh, in oz but no this is not that day this is the day of struggle this is the day when uh, evil is to be resisted and so when i looked at one of the daily email goodies today from clyde pilkington for not today but this is uh from december saturday december the 10th i'm going to read this to you then i'm going to get back to this um, millennium here what I was talking about yesterday uh, the binding of Satan and what that means in a positive and in a negative sense where are you going to hear the negative sense of that the binding of Satan only here we have to look at this aspect of it there are two aspects of the binding of Satan but in the meantime my goodness it's all clear to me now I suspected this actually it has been clear to me I, I, I suspected it but now I see it I heard about it now I know there's a daily email goodie here uh, from Clyde Pilkington by a man named Norman P. Grubb, uh, author of Night of Faith, K-N-I-G-H-T, a Night of Faith. But this man disqualifies himself as a knight, as a knight in shining armor or dull armor or any other kind of armor when he says this, quote, the only battle I have to fight is not against circumstances or problems or people or even Satan. Really? Okay. I'll try to shut up and read. Except them interfering with my inner outlook. If they can get me to see evil as evil, then I'm controlled by the evil I am seeing and believing in. I'm going to have to stop here and comment. If they, that is Satan, can get me to see evil as evil... That I'm controlled by the evil I am seeing and believing in. Let's go on. But if I replace all such negative beliefs in outer appearances by seeing God only in all, then I can just keep on the single path where there is nothing but God in love. Whether appearances are evil or good. Wait a minute, I got one more sentence to read, but I have to comment on this. Whether appearances or evil or good. So the subtle suggestion here, actually to me not so subtle, is that evil is only evil in appearance. Now this smacks of New Age teaching where it just looks like evil, but really nothing is truly evil because God is behind everything. See, this takes a truth. God is behind everything. That's true. But the most uh, dangerous departures from truth are that which... Uh, take their cue from the truth in other words you have a truth and yet that truth is twisted and there's a departure as to the truth paul freaked out over hymenaeus and philetus who said that the resurrection had already occurred because he said concerning those two greek miscreants they swerve as to the truth the only way you can swerve as to the truth is if truth is in view and so, and when truth is in view and you're making a subtle departure from truth, that's dangerous because it seems to be truth, seems to be truth. So yes, God is in all, God is in everything. But the deception here is that we're not to see evil as evil, that somehow Mr. Grubb thinks he's being tricked into seeing evil as evil, as if that's Satan making him see evil as evil. And so he's saying, I rebuke you, Satan. And he's saying that nothing is really evil. It only appears evil. There's no such thing as good and evil because God is behind everything. Oh, that is a terrible mistake because it is truth out of season. It is truth out of time. Uh, you know, you can build an ark today and you say it's a scriptural doctrine. Look, somebody built an ark. Yes, but it's truth out of time. It's out of season. And so a truth out of season is error. And the truth that's out of season is that there's no such thing as evil and that we're not to look at things as evil and good. We are. 
it's out of season because this is how it's going to be at the consummation of the eons. That's a long time from now. This is from December 10th, 2016. Eon 3, an evil eon. That's not the truth for today. The truth that this man's talking about is will be found at the consummation many, many, many years from now. In fact, two eons from now. That's a long time from now. In the meantime, we are to recognize evil as evil. This is New Age teaching where you're supposed to have one stoic attitude no matter what happens to you. You remember that uh, book I exposed, Eckhart Tolle, the book by Eckhart Tolle called The New Earth. It has this middle, this um, Eastern religion type mentality where nothing is evil and nothing is good. Everything's to be tolerated and you have the same reaction to everything. If somebody tells you your wife just died, stoic. Ah, whatever is, is. Somebody tells you you just won the lottery or that your, um, your monk costume is in from the laundry, whatever, that's nice. That's, you answer, that's nice to everything. Uh, your child just shot your wife. That's nice. Oh, your sandals are in from the sandal shop. Oh, that's nice. It's, this is ridiculous. Even our Lord cried at the death of Lazarus. He showed emotion because death was an evil. And it is an evil. It's premature to look at everything and react to it as though it doesn't make any difference what it is. I'll finish. God only is in all of them. Well, that's not true. See, it's true and not true. He only is in all of them. All of what? Good and evil. No, Satan is behind evil. That's how we're to look at it in our relative world. I know God is ultimately behind it, but that's absolutism. And it tends to fatalism. And that's the problem in the Ecclesia today is this fatalistic activity where God's behind it, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Zendo? Why are you getting so upset about evil? You know that God does it anyway. My response is yes. Uh -huh. God sends the rain, right? Yeah, rains of God, sure. Uh, so does that mean I don't use my windshield wipers to get it the heck out of my way? No, it doesn't mean that. Uh, no, you're, getting, you're making sense on me, Zendo. You got to quit that. I told you, God puts obstacles in our path. He puts evil in our path so that we can struggle against it and conquer it and teach um, against it. That's why you want me on this wall. You need me on this wall because I'm not a fatalist. I believe absolute truth, but I live in the world that I'm in as I meant to. I'm going to show you an example from Paul, then I'm going to get back to Revelation. This is the way he ends. Uh, though the fall, wait a minute, through the fall, we got a divided outlook and see two powers, good and evil. Yeah, 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 that's right. But back in Christ, we see only one. Ah, truth out of season, my friend. There is only one God, and yet today, God purposely puts evil before us so that we might uh, oppose it. And this, there's great reward, great glory to be had in opposing it. This is the problem with our government. It has been the problem with our government is that we can't identify enemies. If you can't identify your enemy, then your people are in peril. We can't call radical Islamic terrorism, radical Islamic terrorism. Ah, that's just another religion. It's all of God. That's not our government's uh, outlook, but they have other uh, agenda besides Mr. Grubb's agenda. There's a way, this means very nice, sweet, loving kind, but he's made himself ineffectual. He's neutered himself as an effective knight, as he claims to be. You're not a knight. You're sitting around, you're laying in your hammock, stringing it up at the consummation. There's no such thing as evil. And yet here is Paul in Philippians. This is a mature letter. This is one of Paul's prison's epistle, prison epistles. And he says this in verse two, beware of curs. I'm in verse two of Philippians, I'm sorry, chapter three. Beware of curs, that is dogs. Beware of evil workers. We're to beware in this day of maturity of evil workers. Beware of the maim scission. What's that? That's Paul's, um, that's Paul's funny satirical label for the circumcision. He calls them the maim scission. In other words, all they're doing is injuring themselves. They're just cutting themselves. It has no spiritual purpose. They're just maiming the flesh. Beware of the maim scission, for we are the circumcision who are offering divine service in the spirit of God. Divine service in the spirit of God. What more do you want in Eon 3? 
and are glorying in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in flesh. And yet in this same context, we are to beware of evil workers. And in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6, I've been on a roll on this. Paul says, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Does Christ have with Belial? Does belief have with unbelief? The only battle I have to fight is not against circumstances or problems or even Satan. He says, or, or people. And okay, I give him that, that behind people are the powers of Satan. And in the most spiritual letter, letter we have, Ephesians 6, Paul warns us against the stratagems of the adversary. Ephesians chapter 6, put on the full armor of God. Why do I need armor? To protect myself against Satan's lies. And one of Satan's most subtle lies today is that there is no enemy. There is no enemy. We're all to live in love, God in everything. God is the father of all. No, he's not. He's the God of all, but not the father of all. There's still an enemy. Paul recognizes him. Who's the most spiritual guy in the universe at this at the time he's writing? Then Paul. And yet he says, beware of evil workers. Yet this man says, I don't recognize evil workers. There are no evil workers. They're just God people. They're God only people and I'm to understand them and accept them and th this is dangerous today it's great at the consummation if you want to have this attitude uh, 50,000 years from now I'm with you right on but to have it now is to allow evil to seep into the ecclesia because everybody's asleep on the wall if you have this attitude you're asleep on the wall you've again you cut your own balls off sorry that's a that's a more street way of saying you neutered yourself it has to do with the main decision too. I don't know if it kind of fits in there. <sighs> I got time to take back with my text because I want you to know that I'm serious about moving through the book of Revelation. I'm serious about getting done with this series. But don't think I'm going to make shortcuts. Are you kidding? I'm not about to shortcut anything here. I've been at this for two years now. I'm on a roll. I've been on a roll from day one. And I'm going to stay on a roll and I'm not going to shortcut anything. Don't worry about it. I promise you this. Now, what would Eve have done? This is my question to you in the waning moments of this show. If she had not been tempted. Oh, there would be such possibility for the human race had Eve not been tempted. Probably would have gotten an equal wage for equal hours pay. Yes, women's lib would have gotten off the ground swimmingly. And there wouldn't have been any kind of struggle against any sort of... Um, any sort of... Um, um, bad things or evil speaking of evil uh no sort of disparity and yet we are swimming in disparity today we're swimming in inequality and it's all of god it's all a purpose so that we can fight against it not so we can just surrender to it and say that's just the way it is you know like uh who sing doris day used to sing que sera sera whatever it will be it will be and while she's singing that, you know, the, the enemy's mowing down our people. Uh, forget it. What would mankind have accomplished? What would mankind have accomplished if Satan had not at all times led mankind astray? So what is this terrible thing that has happened to us? It has not given us the opportunity we need to prove ourselves. What will humanity do? Here's the question. It's like at the end of a Batman episode. What will humanity do when left to itself without the influence of sinister spiritual enemies? What will humanity do in the absence of all enemies? We find out. Tune in next week. Same time, same channel. And what we do find out during the millennium, during the thousand years. This is the negative aspect of the millennium. It will show once again humanity's heart because there are many today who seem to think that all that's necessary is that everyone be given a chance. Oh, the gospel of chance. The gospel of chance is the gospel of Christianity. That God stepped back, Satan stepped back, everybody stepped back. That's what Billy Graham used to say. During his crusades, he used to pray, God, step back. Do not influence these people because they must make a decision on their own. It's the hour of decision, according to Billy Graham. And so this chance... Uh, Philosophy is in Christianity. Of course, we know there's no such thing as chance. And yet, I mean, th this is a false chance they're giving people, obviously. Uh, but the mass of humanity, even those who don't believe in God, even those who aren't Christians, 
they think that with their reformations and with their cleansings and with their eugenics or their politics or whatever they want to do, that they are going to create a perfect environment, a utopia on earth. And the only thing needed is to be free of this control of God. Strange that I'm talking about this at the time of the millennium when Satan has been bound. And yet, given an opportunity, uh, they think they're going to manage without the grace of God. But this idea, this whole philosophy of leave humanity alone and we can prove ourselves, uh, this philosophy is so antagonistic to God's purpose to becoming all in all that it its falsity has to be demonstrated. The theory itself must be squashed on a scale that is sufficiently vast to be utterly conclusive. And that after this um, demonstration, there is no more argument possible. And you would think that at the end of this eon, the demonstration would have been made. Because look, you've had all, you've had 6,000 years to put all your, your, your governments in place, your, your monarchies, your uh, representative governments, communists, uh, socialism, uh, republics, uh, everything's been tried. And then so none of it works. And so here comes Christ finally to throw you out and to instigate his government, to inaugurate. Instigate sounds bad. Sounds like there's some kind of uh, secret evil plan behind it. No, to inaugurate his government. So what happens? What happens when Christ inaugurates it? There, there comes still the argument from stubborn humanity. Ah, uh, there could still come this argument that we well, just, if you'd gotten rid of the influence of Satan, then we could have been all right. Okay, the influence of Satan is going to be taken away for a thousand years. And the result is incredible. Your mind is going to be blown when you see the results of this. I mean, sure, the earth is great, but mankind is still seething on the borders. They're seething on the outskirts. They're still not happy with a 100% chance of sunshine, winds, light winds from the south, relative humidity 50%. They're not yet satisfied with that. Uh, they will rebel in an instant because they still don't love God. And so every little uh, inkling of this unwillingness to have God over us. We will not come under this God. It has to be squashed out, not for the sake of a divine uh, streak of indignation, but because God wants humanity to finally be at rest. You see, he wants them finally to be at peace, to be rid of any possible inkling that, oh, man, one more chance and we could have had it. No, that has to be put to bed. Once and for all, no, you couldn't have, do, have done it. You wouldn't have done it. And, and so this is a mercy of God. But you have, to, you have to know this because when you see these crazy things happening at the end of the, the millennium where Satan is loosed and gets up an insurrection, how the heck could that happen? This is why I'm telling you why I'm giving you the secret is that every single ounce of human pride must be dissolved, not for the sake of God's anger, but for the sake of humanity itself.